Jason Kickout, you've kept all your children's centres open yes. so far. Yes, we have. Will yeah. they all always stay open under the Greens? I would hope so, but really it's unforeseeable at the moment because we have this unbelievable level of cuts being put down on us. And what we see is this consensus in Westminster between Conservatives, mm. Lib Dems and Labour that councils will be cut until 2020. There is this austerity consensus. So um, I, finally, Gordon Henderson realised that the problem is central government. Did you find that revelatory? A Tory MP saying that the government was well, the problem? in private, many MPs and almost every council leader of every party Party, think we are in an unsustainable position if the cuts keep being pushed mm. down. 28% cuts on average to funding for councils. Only 8% has been taken out of Whitehall. That's not fair and it's not sustainable. But all of the problems that you've had um, since you've been the party in control of, of Brighton and Hove City, you you can't blame them on austerity. The bin men strike, the infighting, the inflation busting parking charges. It hasn't always gone well and you can't always blame the government and austerity. No, uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, first time ever running a principal authority, some mistakes were made. But I think the fact that we've delivered or on course to deliver three quarters of our manifesto promises only halfway through our term shows that we are actually committed to delivering what we got elected for. Has it been a revelation to you being in power? Has it been more frustrating, more difficult than you expected? Oh, well, of course, it's been a learning process. It's, it's new for our party. Um, but I think uh, there is a long history of central government passing down the pain to local government to try and put some political water. And we saw, uh, you know, the MP here trying to do that, saying, oh, it's the council. And finally, at least he was honest enough to, to fess up and say, actually, we have a government who are overly centralising and cutting again and again and again and protest at the council level. Will only take you so far because the fundamental system is broken. So essentially, every level of government these days is about deciding where the axe falls, isn't it? That's it. That's what governing's about. Well, I think... Clearly there are efficiencies to be had and we've been able to protect a lot by finding the way to deliver services that are as good, if not better than before, for less money. That is part of it, but that can only go so far and at the speed and rate, I think sadly that is part of what is happening in government. And that's why I'm so worried that until 2020 we have all three parties in Westminster saying that's what's going to happen. Let's see what Labour are promising. Let's see. Labour has issued these, these hard mm -hmm. targets. Now interestingly, the three Brighton and Hove constituencies are all in there. Jason, how do you keep a foothold in the city when Labour's trying to store on Brighton and Hove? Well, I think um, clearly Labour set out the conditions for the economic problems that we're in now, and I don't think people are going to forgive and forget as quickly as Ed Miliband would like. So I you mean, think Caroline Lucas will still be an MP after the next election? I a fantastic chance of, of actually having a greater majority than, than she did last even, time. I even, think, even with your reputation as a, quite a chaotic leader at Brighton City Council? I, I don't think that is a I reputation. Mean, you know, You'd you like punishing, to say that. Punishing, but, I mean, ultimately, bedroom tax workers. is a terrible regressive move, but it's a tiny measure in the grand scheme okay. of the economic chaos that we, with countries inherit for Labour you, two and don't, are... you two won't compete uh, you know, against each other at the next election, but I have an interesting question. In the past, you've described yourself, Sarah, as growing up in a very socialist environment. Mm. Jason, I know from talking to you on the programme before, you see the Greens as the new socialists. Tell them, if you would, the real socialist here, step forward. Well, um, I think Jason's actually more of a mango, um, you've been described <laughs> as, and I'm much yeah. more of a watermelon. I, 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 don't, I don't think that language is helpful, and I don't identify with that. I think, actually, um, green politics is a different kind of politics that reaches across all of those there kind of There are no socialists sitting here, apparently. Uh, look, let's go back to fracking. Barely a politics, Sunday politics goes by where we don't talk about it. Um, you could have come out and said you're an eco-freak if you're opposed to fracking. What do you make of that? Well, I mean, they are climate uh, change deniers. They, I mean, they're a fringe party. I mean, ultimately, um, the, it's very clear that both the geology mm. and the market would not support the wide-scale fracking that George Osborne thinks it would. It is damaging mm. to the environment, and there's clear opposition across the board. That's why we declared our city frack-free.